Hello, and it's great to have you joining in for another session of Together Apart. I'd love for you to think about your challenge from last week. So the challenge was for you to try and keep a list or a diary of where you might have seen the Holy Spirit move during the last week, whether it was on your own lives or things that you'd heard about in the wider world. So how did you get on? Was it easy, hard? Would it be something that you might want to try and continue? Did you feel that it did anything in your relationship with God at all? And even if you did it just once, that's great. And it's a great way to start. And if you didn't, maybe have a think about why you didn't want to try this one. We're going to begin with a short video. You will find the link for the video in the description of this one. So go ahead and pause now and then come back afterwards. So have a little think about what you've just watched. Now it's time for our story, so I hope you're ready for this. Brian Stevenson is a man with a mission. For more than 30 years, he's worked at the sharpest end of the American legal system, working tirelessly to save the lives of death row inmates who have been wrongly convicted. He's often worked with few resources beyond his own ingenuity in cases that many told him were impossible to win. And by devoting his life to the pursuit of justice, he and the organisation that he founded in Montgomery, Alabama, have so far saved the lives of over a hundred men who should not have been given the death penalty in the first place. Stevenson's most famous case was the subject of the 2019 film Just Mercy and concerned the story of Walter McMillan, an African-American man who was wrongly convicted of the murder of a young white woman in 1986. Even though Macmillan had been at a church meal with dozens of witnesses at the time of her murder, Macmillan was convicted of the crime by an overwhelmingly white jury, driven by a police force who were desperate to find someone to blame for the killing. He was sentenced to death. Fresh out of law school, Stevenson took on Macmillan's case, despite being warned not to in a phone call from the very judge who had issued the death penalty. Stevenson launched an appeal to the original decision. It failed. He tried again and failed again. In total between 1991 and 93, Stevenson launched four separate appeals against Macmillan's conviction and all four were turned down. Finally though, a breakthrough came when the key witness for the prosecution, a man who had claimed to have committed the murder with Macmillan, admitted that his story was a lie and that he had been coerced by police to testify. At last, Stevenson had the grounds for a retrial and he won. After six years on death row, Walter McMillan was a free man. The story of Walter McMillan is a horrifying insight into the flaws of the American legal system and the historic racism which still plagues the country's south. It shines a light on the injustices that have been historically perpetrated on the basis of race which are the ripple effects of slavery and racial segregation. It also gives some insight into why initiatives such as the Black Lives Matter movement are still necessary today. The story of Stevenson, however, is both a beacon of hope and an illustration of what Christian faith looks like in action. A committed follower of Jesus, Stevenson shows what is possible when someone takes the Bible's focus on justice seriously. His perseverance in pursuit of what is right has not only saved many lives, but also inspired countless other people to follow his lead. My faith influences and shapes everything I do, he told the Christian Post. I remember growing up and the preacher would read from the prophet Micah. What does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. That has framed the kind of life I want to live. What's your response to the story of Walter McMillan, who spent six years on death row? How does it make you feel? You might feel horrified at what happened, trying to understand how something so terrible can happen. The legal system should be there to protect people and find out the truth 
But as we can see, sometimes it's against people where there are issues in a country. What do you understand by the term justice? Is it important to you and why? Justice is a concept on ethics and law that mean that people behave in a way that is fair, equal and balanced for everyone. Justice includes the notion of upholding the law as in the work of police, judges and the court. Many philosophers, theologians, sociologists and others define justice as the proper order of people and things. What would justice look like in this case? What do you think should have happened next? Justice should have meant that Walter Macmillan would have been treated the same as someone who was white from the very beginning. He was treated differently by the legal system because of his skin colour. As soon as it was brought to their attention that he was elsewhere with witnesses, they should have investigated another suspect. What else do you think? In the Bible, the book of Proverbs frequently refers to justice and how it is a huge priority for God. Because God cares so much about justice, then we need to care about it too. We're going to look at Proverbs chapter 3, beginning at verse 27. Do everything you possibly can for those who need help. If your neighbour needs something you have, don't say, come back tomorrow. Give it to him immediately. Don't make plans to harm your neighbour who lives near you and trusts you. Don't take people to court without good reason, especially when they have done nothing to harm you. In these few verses here, the writer is trying to give guidance to the reader about how to live wisely or how to live God's way. He's explaining that acting justly is an important part of wise living. The really key verse here is verse 27, not withholding good when it is in your power to act. This is an incredibly challenging verse because in the West, we are really powerful. We have money, opportunities and lots of other kinds of power, which means we are often able to act either justly or unjustly. We can probably all think of examples of injustice, but here's the uncomfortable thing. Many of them can be stopped or influenced and we have the power to make a difference. This verse tells us very clearly that we can't just stand by and watch injustice happen. We have to make use of the power that we've been given. Verses 28 to 30 give some practical examples of justice. Don't pretend you can't help when you can. Don't betray trust. Don't blame someone else for something they haven't done. Verse 30 may be another driving verse for Brian Stevenson. God wants you to participate in and enable a just world. What examples have you seen of people or whole countries withholding good when it was within their power to act? So there's so many examples all throughout history. In recent years, you might have heard of the Me Too or Black Lives Matter movements. These have come to light after so many years of being hurt or stepped over because of their sex or skin colour. Going back further, there was apartheid in South Africa or the Holocaust by Hitler's regime. You've maybe seen it in smaller scales in school where someone is excluded because of their appearance or skill or background where they live or anything else. What happens when we don't act in the situation and to us? Someone will get hurt by the lack of action. The person who is targeted by the injustice will feel the direct consequence, but you will also have to live with the fact that you stood by and watched someone being treated unjustly. Is living in a just way easy? Why or why not? Well, we might think it is easy to live a just life. After all, it's just living in a way that treats everyone fairly. But we might find it hard when we come up against obstacles and have outside influences. We might need to stand up against friends or family or something bigger, like a whole nation. 
What are some practical ways in which you could live more justly? Brian Stevenson's story is inspiring, but he has had to dedicate his whole life to justice. How much justice is enough? Should you just change a few habits, make sure you do one just thing a month or something else? Should it be something that you do in your every single day life, trying to impact as much as you can with as many people as possible? Every choice you make, should that be a just choice? Every action you do, every person you meet, how can you do that? How can we do anything about injustice if we don't know what's going on in our world, our country, even our own towns? So this week, your challenge is to educate yourselves around an issue of social injustice. So you might choose to look at the Black Lives Matter movement or check out IJM's, the International Justice Mission's work to end modern day slavery. You could look at the facts surrounding gender pay equality in the film industry or disability discrimination in the workplace or any other matter of injustice that's important to you. So have a look and see what you can find and try to learn something new. I'm going to close in a word of prayer. Please continue in your own thoughts once I'm finished. God, thank you so much that we can choose to be educated in areas of injustice. There's so much that we don't know is going on in the world, in our country and in our towns. Help us to stand up for what is right, to make the choice to live a just life with all of our actions every day. Amen.